Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your NFL Fade the Public video for week five of the NFL regular season this Sunday, October 9th. Also a little Monday night football for you as well here in this video. But once again, the most public plays in the NFL free for you this Sunday right here on Wager Talk TV. And look, if you've been fading the public, it's been very profitable so far this season. In fact, last week was the first week and the public didn't lose big. And they were 3-3. Three and three. And a lot of you chimed in and said, oh, big week for the public. They were still just 500. They went 3-3 three and three overall. But keep in mind, fading the public the first three weeks here on this video was 10-3. and three. So even after 3-3 three and three last week, fading these most public sides has gone 13-6 and six the first four weeks of this NFL season. All the most public plays for this week five, Sunday and Monday, for you in just a moment. Hey, quick uh, reminder, if you're not on board for my football best bets, you're missing out. It's been a fantastic start to the season. The first four weeks have been just incredible. NFL, we cashed again Thursday night football with the under between the Colts and Broncos. Not a single touchdown was scored. Yes, it might have set pro football back 100 years offensively, but it was good for my backers as we cashed an easy under 12-9 game on Thursday night. Now 15-6, and 71% of the NFL the past three and a half weeks as we head into this Sunday. I've got some super strong best bets for Sunday pro football. Also have your Monday nighter up for just $9 because it's always $9 Monday at Wager Talk. That's an over-under best bet up there for that special price all weekend long. Hey, look, if you want to get the daily picks or a pick package, you can do so. Single games are 25 a daily package is 39 But, of course, if you're serious about making money, the best option is a direct subscription. And the price has never been lower for the rest of the football season. What, look, if you're joining me on Saturday afternoon, you can still get the Saturday night college football games. If you're watching this on Sunday or even Monday, still get the NFL and the rest of the college football season. There's over four months of football to go, and the reason I bring that up is because right now I've got a very special promo code. If you go to my page right now and you drop down the football menu, you'll see that there's a $44 discount on the rest of the college and pro season combined. I'm going to do it even better. I'm going to tack on another $100 discount with promo code SAC100, S-A-C-K-100. SAC100 gets you another $100 additional discount on the rest of the football season. So once again, go to my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. By the way, get there quicker with shortcut code WT.buzz slash SM. Select the drop-down menu for the college and pro combo. You'll see a $44 discount in our promo code SAC100, and now it's a $144 discount. Get it right now. We've been red hot in football. Cast again on Friday night also as we head into the weekend. Now on a 22-11 college and pro run. All right, let's get to the most public plays this week in the NFL. We've got six games to talk about here on the video Four sides that were very public, also a couple additional leans. I'm also going to have the Monday night information for you in just a moment. First of all, let's look at the two most public plays this week. And these are two of the most public plays I've seen all season, and both are favorites. As you know, the public likes to play favorites, and they're heavy on two teams this week. First one goes at 1 o'clock Eastern. That's the Tennessee Titans. And I don't think this is necessarily a play on Tennessee. I think it's more of a play against the Washington Commanders, who have looked just miserable the last couple of weeks. Washington, of course, came from behind to beat Jacksonville in week one. Otherwise, they would be winless. There's only one winless team in the league, by the way, the Houston Texans. Washington pretty close second, though, at one and three straight up in ATS. They have failed to cover each of the last three weeks. They've scored just 10 and eight points the last two weeks offensively. So, look, it's hard for me to make a case for them, but I'm not sure the Titans are that great either. And this looks like a little bit of an overreaction. And we also have what is a sharp square divide in this game. And some people had some great comments, by the way. I love the comments. Put your questions below. Any questions you have about the NFL or handicapping in general, I read every question. I reply back as well. Great one last week. A couple people asked, what's a sharp square divide? Quite simply, it's when the public, the recreational bettors are heavy on one side, but the professional sharp bettors are heavy on the other side. And you can often tell this when there's a high ticket count, like on Tennessee, yet the line is dropping. And that's because the big money has been on Washington in this game. So once again, it's a pros versus Joes, whatever you want to call it. But Tennessee is a very public side this week, yet the line has dropped from two and a half down to two, even one and a half as we head into the weekend. I thought for sure we'd see a plus three by this weekend with everybody on Tennessee, but the sharp money has come in and grabbed two and a half. We never got that three. Not sure why they didn't wait. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Sometimes that sharp money isn't as sharp as you think. Why not wait and try to get a three with the public loading up on Tennessee? But it doesn't look like it's going to happen. I'm seeing twos, even one and a halfs out there as we head into the weekend. Anyway, Tennessee, very public side on Sunday. <clears throat> the other really public side this Sunday, it goes at 4 o'clock Eastern, a late afternoon game. 
And that's the San Francisco 49ers. And once again, I think this goes both ways. San Francisco is pretty public after that nice win on Monday night. But it's also just a pure play against the Panthers. If you recall last week, I mentioned that the public was on the Arizona Cardinals, which surprised me. I think it's mainly because they wanted nothing to do with the Panthers. I actually agreed with the Cardinals last week. I said right here in the video, the public's not always wrong. You know, this is a filter, a factor to use in your handicapping puzzle as part of the equation. And I agreed with the Cardinals last week here in the video. And the public got that one right, fading Carolina. So they're coming right back, fading them again. What's interesting, though, is if you recall last week, the Rams were a very public underdog here on the video. And I told you I liked the 49ers. That was actually a strong best bet for me at my clients at wagertalk.com. Part of that current 15 and 6, 71% NFL run the past few weeks. So the public lost going against San Francisco, but they won going against Carolina. They're going to go against the Panthers again. And the 49ers look like a pretty public side here. And the line has definitely been adjusted based on last week's results. The look ahead last week before the teams played was going to be San Francisco minus three. Now it's six and a half. So this is what we're talking about over a field goal more line value on Carolina based on last week's results. So once again, San Francisco, a very public side. We'll be interesting to see if we get a plus seven by this weekend. You know, I mentioned that Tennessee-Washington game. I thought we'd get a plus three. It's dropped. This line has held steady six and a half all week as we head into the weekend. Um, we'll see if you get a plus seven. You know, if you like Carolina, probably wait and try to get a plus seven as the public is lining up pretty heavy on San Francisco. Those are the two most public plays this week. There are two other games that are public underdogs. And as you know in this video, the public is normally 60 to 70% of the time on favorites. So to see a public favorite like Tennessee or San Francisco, we got to get near that 80% range like we did this week in consensus. Underdogs are a different story. Anytime we get at least 50% or more in an underdog, you can start saying that's a public play. And we've got two dogs that are very public this week. By far one of the most public dogs I've seen all season is the Seattle Seahawks. Heavy consensus on Seattle as the underdog here. And I think, once again, this is not necessarily a play on Seattle, but more of a play against New Orleans. Um, if you recall last week here in the video, Minnesota Vikings, a very public play in the London game. It was minus three as we headed into the weekend. I said it's going higher. I saw some three and a halves. It closed as high as four, and it landed right on that three. So the Saints did cover the closing line, the weekend line, as the public pushed Minnesota higher. And that's another reason why fading the public works long term because we get that extra line value. And uh, we'll see if that's the case in this game. Uh, Saints coming off the London trip without rest. Not a great setup. But New Orleans is probably better uh, than their 1-3 and three straight up in ATS record indicates. And by the way, that only cover was the late cover last week. If you played it early in the week, it was actually a push. Minnesota even opened minus 2.5. A, a few people might have gotten a win, actually, with the Vikes. Uh, so New Orleans has barely covered a spread this year. They're 1-3 and three straight up. As I said, barely 1-3 and three ATS. But turnover has been the problem. 10 turnovers the last three games, and they've only forced two. Now, they're not a great team. That's part of the reason. But statistically, they're not playing bad. In fact, um, they're outgaining their opponents 6.3 to 5.1 yards per play. That's a huge margin. I mean, that's like 3-1, and 4-0 team normally. The 10-2 turnover deficit the last three weeks has been the difference. So now, do they start playing up to their abilities? Andy Dalton at quarterback, you know, not a great player, but he's a savvy veteran. That should help limit turnovers. They had eight turnovers the two prior weeks. They had just two last week, so that was an improvement. And what does Seattle have left in the tank? 48-45 win back and forth against the Detroit Lions last week, winning that game outright as a dog. Now they're on the road for a second straight week. So although New Orleans has to travel back from London, uh, not a great spot for Seattle either. And I talked about line value. This line has dropped a bit this week. Um, we saw the opening line in this game uh, as high as six, the look ahead. And um, now it's down to five. It was five and a half earlier. Now it's five. I even see a couple four and a halfs out there, Westgate, South Point, some places in Las Vegas as we head into the weekend. So once again, if you're going to play New Orleans, probably wait five out there now. Probably will drop to four and a half in more locations like it's starting to do. If you like Seattle, plus five, probably lock it up now. It was five and a half, even six earlier. It looks like it's going to continue to plummet as the Seattle Seahawks, a very public underdog this week. Got another very public dog as well on Sunday, and it's a late game at 425 Eastern, Dallas Cowboys. How ironic, right? We're in week five of the NFL. If you recall back in week two, right here on this video, the Cincinnati Bengals playing Dallas was the most public side of the week. And of course, Dallas won that game outright as a seven-point home dog. Cooper Rush making his first start. He's now a perfect 3-0 straight up ATS the last three weeks. Don't forget last year, his debut as a starter was at Minnesota, a national TV Sunday night game. He won that game outright as well as a touchdown dog. So he's now 4-0 straight up in ATS as a starter the last couple seasons. 
And now all of a sudden the public is back in Dallas. But as I said earlier with the 49er game, I think this is also because they're fading the Rams after how bad L.A. looked on Monday Night Football, putting up just nine points in that game. They did have a 2-0 turnover deficit, though, but offensively, they look challenged this season. Earlier this year on Wager Talk Today, back in August before the season began, I gave a season win play on the Rams under the 10.5 wins. And I said, I know it's hard to picture them losing seven games as Super Bowl champ. I think it's not as hard to picture now. They're just 2-2 two and two straight up, 1-3 and three against the spread. But is this an overreaction by the public? Dallas off three straight wins and covers. They've got the Eagles on deck next week. They just played the Giants and Commanders. So three straight division games. This is sandwiched in between it. Um, I know it's the defending Super Bowl champs, but it's ironic now to see Dallas as a public play when the public wanted nothing to do with them just three weeks ago. Um, as far as the line in this game, as we head into the weekend, pretty much five, five and a half. I even see a four and a half out there, the South Point, which is a more public uh, line. So this line is dropping. Five and a half is going to be the best you probably get with Dallas. Mostly fives out there now. Wouldn't be surprised to see more four and a halves as we head into the weekend. Dallas Cowboys, another very public underdog, along with the Seahawks on Sunday. There are two other NFL sides that were just a bit outside from making the cut this week. I'd say they're strong additional public leans. And by the way, the additional public leans I've given you on the video so far this season, three and one fading those also. So these two plays just missed the cut of being really public. I'd say they're additional public leans. Going to get to those for you in just a moment. And that includes both Sunday and the Monday night game here on this video. Quick reminder, college and pro football has been fantastic this season. As we head into the weekend, 22 and 11, 67% winning run the past several weeks, 15 and 6, 71% NFL winning run the last three and a half weeks, including that easy under winner on Thursday night football. Broncos, Colts, 12 9, not even a single touchdown was scored. Pretty hard not to miss the under when you don't score a touchdown. We cashed easy on Thursday, so the momentum continues 15 and 6, 71% NFL run heading into this weekend. And don't forget, now is the time to get on board because you get a huge discount on the rest of the college and pro football season with promo code SAC100, S-A-C-K-100. Go to my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Go to the football drop-down menu on the right-hand side. You'll see NFL and college football combo for the rest of the season. You'll notice there's an instant $44 discount applied, but I'm doing it even better. I'm tacking on another $100 discount when you enter promo code SAC100. So in total, you're going to get $144 off the normal rate for the rest of the college and pro football season. Start winning right now for the next four plus months through the Super Bowl in February. Every college, every pro football player release every day for the rest of the season. And you save big right now. Instant $44 discount. And then you get another $100 discount with promo code SAC100. S-A-C-K-100. SAC100. Use it in the drop-down menu when you select the College and Pro Combo Package for the rest of the season. Save big and start winning big right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Don't forget to get to my page quicker with shortcut code WT.buzz slash SM. All right, there were two games that just missed the cut. Those of you who like my baseball videos know these games were just a bit outside from being strong consensus plays. I'd say they're additional public leans. Let's start with the Sunday game, and then I'll look at Monday Night Football. First, the Sunday game, Minnesota Vikings. I mentioned that they were a public play last week here in the video. The line went from three all the way up to four over the weekend before kickoff in London early Sunday morning. Of course, the Vikings win late 28-25, win by exactly three points, and they land on that key number. I mentioned last week that there's about a 9.5% chance that NFL favorites win by exactly three points. Seven is also the second most key number. I'd say about a 4 to 5% chance normally that an NFL favorite is going to win by exactly seven. Why do I bring that up? Because the Vikings were a seven-point favorite most of this week, but the public has now pushed it up to seven and a half. Look ahead line last week was six and a half, was seven most of this week. Now during the weekend, it's seven and a half. This is a perfect example why fading the public works long term. So although this, the consensus data on this wasn't quite as strong as the other favorites I gave you this week, like Tennessee and San Francisco, I wanted to point it out here on the video because it has crossed that key number now at 7.5. Um, we are starting to get some line value maybe with the Bears. Hey, look, it's hard for me to make a case for the Chicago Bears. They're a really bad team. They cannot throw the ball. That's always a concern when playing from behind. But keep in mind, Minnesota's traveling back home with no rest after the London game. They did not want to have their bye this week. Uh, we'll see if that comes back to bite them or not. They also have a game at Miami next week. Uh, so not a great spot, even though this is a divisional game for Minnesota. But once again, most importantly, the line has gone from 7 to 7.5. And, and that's because the public is on the Minnesota Vikings this week. Kicks off at 1 o'clock Eastern. All right, uh, one other additional public lean for you. And that's the Monday night football game tonight, this week. 
uh, divisional battle in the AFC West, Raiders and Chiefs. And the public is on the Chiefs. Not a surprise. They back Kansas City a lot. Uh, we saw them on the Chiefs last week on Sunday Night Football. We actually had a sharp square divide in that game as the public was on Kansas City, yet Tampa went from plus one, pick them when I did the video, to as high as minus two by kickoff. So a lot of sharps were on Tampa. I didn't disagree with that move. Obviously, they got down big early. Brady actually played pretty well. And Kansas City, once again, did give up some points. Um, this is a Kansas City team um, on the season, has allowed at least 20 points or more in all four games. Of course, they can really outscore people. They've put up 41 or more in two of those four games, and that's why they continue to win by margin, 3-1 and one straight up, 2-2 two and two ATS. Raiders, meanwhile, after the 0-3 start, did win and cover for the first time this season last week. Now they travel with the extra day for Monday Night Football. Uh, public likes Kansas City in this game. Not quite strong enough to be a full, th th full throttle consensus play. That's a mouthful. But it's still a strong lean, a game that was just a bit outside from making the cut. Um, one thing I want to point out about Kansas City, though, is that this is not a great scheduling spot for them. Uh, they were at Tampa Bay last week, Sunday night football, as we just talked about. And look ahead next week, huge game, biggest game of the season, perhaps next Sunday at home against the Buffalo Bills. So it is a sandwich spot, but the fact that it's the Raiders, the division game in Monday night football, it's hard for me to say it's going to be a letdown spot. So we'll see if Kansas City brings their A game or not. But on the surface, it is a little bit of a sandwich situation. Um, and once again, this is holding steady as we head into the weekend on that key number of seven, Kansas City Chiefs minus seven. So we'll see if the public pushes it higher. I think they might, because obviously Monday Night Football is a heavy bet game, and we are seeing some seven minus 20s out there. So if you like Kansas City, you probably want to play it earlier this weekend at minus seven. If you like the Raiders, I would wait. I think you're going to find some seven and a halves at some point by the time this game kicks off on Monday Night Football. By the way, my top recommendation, my play for my clients at wagertalk.com is not on the side in this game. It is on the total, and I have it for just $9 because keep in mind, every best bet for Mondays are $9 at wagertalk.com. And I put it up early this weekend so you can lock in now, get a strong Monday night football over-under winner between the Raiders and Chiefs for just $9 right now on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, do me a favor, click the like button, the thumb up. Also, make sure you're subscribed here to Wager Talk TV. Over 104,000 viewers and subscribers. More viewers than that, actually, but 104,000 subscribers. If you're a viewer and you haven't subscribed, do us a favor as well and hit subscribe. That's what keeps all this great content free and daily right here on this channel. If you want instant alerts when my college football top 25 video is live each week, and by the way, those of you who are joining us on Saturday, be sure to check out that college football top 25 video. Six games I previewed for free there for Saturday College Football, or instant alerts when this NFL Fade the Public video goes live every weekend. Hit the bell along with the subscribe button. And most importantly, leave me comments below. I read every comment. I reply back. I love the support. I love the insight. I honestly believe the smartest and sharpest viewers in all of sports betting are right here on Wager Talk TV on YouTube. And don't forget about the Wager Talk TV app. You can download it for all your favorite mobile devices. You can also listen to these shows audio form, podcast form, on the go, with your favorite podcast apps as well. Quick programming note, I'll be back Monday through Friday this coming week. I'll be guest hosting Wager Talk Today along with Teddy Covers. The Prez is on assignment. So I'll be here Monday through Friday this week, noon Eastern every day, 9 a.m. Pacific. And of course, that show's archived 24-7 right here on Wager Talk TV. So that's your homework. Click subscribe, hit the uh, like button, and most importantly, leave me some comments below. I want your thoughts on these public plays. Where do you agree? Where do you disagree? I gave you two big favorites. Two public dogs, red flag alert, public dogs. And of course, those two additional games that were just a bit outside for making the cut. Hey, don't forget, by the way, speaking of just a bit outside, the baseball playoffs are here. I love this new format. We saw some great games on Friday night heading into the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, these three game wild cards. I like it. Let me know your thoughts on baseball as well. Check out Wager Talk today for more baseball talk this week. First pitch as well here on this network. Don't forget the NBA starts in just over a week. You can see I'm excited that October is here because it's the only time of year that you get every major sport going in the same month. Thanks for your support. Don't forget, if you want the rest of the football season, now is the time to do so. Save an additional $100 with promo code SAC100, S-A-C-K-100, on my page right now. Use the drop-down menu, select the College and Pro Combo. You'll see a $44 instant discount. Use SAC100, get another $100, so it's $144 off the rest of the football season. Steve Merrill wagertalk.com. Talk to you again soon right here on Wager Talk TV. Enjoy the games and most importantly, cash in big this weekend. Best of luck.